I would like to introduce our speaker, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Dr. Clayton was appointed as the first incumbent of the Mary Ann McPhail Equine Performance Center at Michigan State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Hillary Clayton. Okay, we've looked at cardiovascular fitness. Any questions on that? You probably roll yes. Um, taking the horse out for a walk is not going to make him a lot fitter. But, you know, if the, if the alternative is standing in the stall, then going for a walk is great. And you can do lots of things in walking. You can do lots of suppling exercises. If you're walking out on trails, you can incorporate some hill work and so on. No, no, you wouldn't need to do that every day. If you did that even two or three days a week, it might be helpful. I'm talking about doing, working twice a day, mostly as a technique for these kind of big, lazy horses that are, that are really not fit enough. No, I'm not suggesting that you work twice a day with, you know, if you've got a nice thoroughbred that loves to work and you don't have any problem keeping him fit. Other than to maybe just once in a while, you know, take him out twice in a day so it doesn't seem totally foreign when you get to the competitions. Okay, on to suppling exercises. Suppleness is something that we need to work on right from the beginning. It's very important at the lower levels of the pyramid of training. And I'm not saying it's not important at the upper levels, but hopefully we can develop it in the young horse and then maintain it through the years of competition. So what are the benefits of suppleness? Well, what we're trying to do is increase the range of motion of the joints so that the body and the shoulders and the hips and so on become more mobile. With the increased range of joint motion, the strides can be longer and more expressive. And also, as a whole part of this suppleness, we would like to reduce unnecessary muscle tension. So there's an also an implication of relaxation along with suppleness. How do we do suppling exercises? Well, I talk about three types of exercises. Dynamic suppling that uses the horse's own weight or muscles to do the suppling. Passive suppling exercises that you use your body to move the horse's joints. And then natural suppling, which is the sort of thing the horse does when he's grazing, rolling, turning his head around to bite or to fly. As a general rule, when the tissues are stretched rapidly, we get short-term benefits. Whereas if the tissues are stretched slowly and then held in the stretched position, we can get longer-term benefits. So, dynamic suppling exercises. These use the horse's own weight or muscle strength to do the stretching. Um, this, this is the type of suppling exercises we do as part of our warm-up, part of our riding routine. So these tend to be a rapid type of stretching. Now that doesn't mean it's not useful. It is useful, but it mostly the, the value is within the current training session, at least the value for suppling the tissues. So all of the things that we typically think of as suppling exercises, turns and circles, lateral movements, rails, gymnastic jumping, all of those can have a suppling effect. Um, a word about the jumping. If your horse jumps like this, then this is great. If he jumps with his back hollow and his head in the air, don't bother with it. Um, you know, as with all of these types of exercise, if the horse is not doing it correctly, it's not going to have any benefit. For those of us who live in places like Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, we can make the most of the snow. We can use the snow as a suppling exercise or shallow water. Um, exercises where the horse is going through the snow or, or water and it's shallow enough that he can 
step high enough to clear the, the surface. Um, that will have a good suppling effect. Plowing through deep water like this, um, you know, it, it has some conditioning effects, but it's not a suppling exercise. Right? To get the suppling effects, they have to be able to step clear of the surface. So we're looking at shallow water or, or maybe snow. Passive stretching exercises. Here's a horse who thought he needed to be stretched a little bit before the race. But essentially what we're doing with these exercises is applying a force, usually to the upper part of the horse's limbs or sometimes to the head and neck. And we're taking the horse's body to a certain position and then holding that position for 20 to 30 seconds and trying to get a longer term stretching effect. Now this particular stretch is um, stretching the shoulder and elbow. The horse's scapula is free to slide across his chest wall. So with this exercise you're actually sliding the whole lower part of the scapula forwards and upwards and pulling the elbow joint forward. You do this by holding the, the horse's leg somewhere below his knee, but allow the knee to just flex a little bit, and that takes the tension off the ligaments and tendons on the back of the leg. And then pull the leg so that the elbow is moving forwards and somewhat upwards. And that's a good stretch for you know, giving horses expression, making sure they're not limited in their ability to, to raise the foreleg. And this is just a similar stretch, pulling the foreleg back. You can also do these same stretches on the hip and, and stifle joints. I actually prefer these type of dynamic mobilization exercises over the um, sort of stretches where you might take the horse's head and neck and, and manually move it to a certain position. These exercises are basically baited stretches, carrot stretches. Um, and you can do the rounding exercises with the, note, the chin taken to the chest between the knees or down towards the fetlocks. And each of those having a slightly different effect in terms of which part of the neck is being maximally rounded. Um, but you can also see here that it's not only the neck that's rounding, the horse's whole thoracic and, and lumbar um, vertebral column is, is rising as he comes down into this rounded position. And in order to do that, he's having to use his own muscles. The horse won't go into these positions if they're painful. He'll only go as far as he feels safe um, and pain-free in going, but at the same time, he's strengthening the muscles that, are, that he's going to use to round his back. Yes? Okay. Um, the question is about when to do these ac exercises, before or after riding. And the soft tissues are more elastic and less friable when they're warm. When the horse starts working, his body temperature goes up by about one degree. So that would be the logic for doing them after warm-up or, you know, let's say you take the horse out, lunge him first, then stretch him, then ride him. That would be a really good way to do it. Or you can do these exercises after work and before the horse is fully cooled out. Um, you know, if I'm totally honest, I don't think that someone my size is going to do a lot of damage stretching a horse when he's cold. But, you know, the, the real answer is you do it when the horse is warm. Um, where were they? And here's the... the mobilization exercise taken around to the side. And again, you can see, although we're moving the horse's chin, it's not just his neck, it's his whole thoracolumbar region is also being laterally flexed. And again, the horse is, is learning to use his own abdominal and sublumbar muscles to do that. So if you come, if any of you are coming tomorrow to the session I'm doing with Betsy, we're going to be talking about these very exercises in horses and 
you know, how, how to do the equivalent of Pilates with your horse. Sometimes I think we, are, we try too hard to look after our horses. You know, we put them out with fly sprays and um, fly sheets on and they don't even need to turn around and be biting at the flies anymore. And some of those, just doing some of those movements are keeping them mobile and flexible. And they love rolling. So this is coming back to your question, that the soft tissues are more elastic when they're warm, and the best time to do the suppling exercises is when the horse is already warmed up. So the dynamic suppling, the um, turns, bending, lateral work, and so on, you can start those in the later part of the warm-up and then continue to use them throughout your workout and during the, the warm-down. And then the passive suppling and mobilization exercises, preferably after the warm-up or after your lunging at the beginning of work, and then again, or alternatively, before cooling out. Yes? Okay. What's the maximal beneficial place to put the horse's nose when he's stretching, when he's being worked under saddle? Um, to my mind, we need to be stretching the tissues on the top line. And if the horse goes as Gerhard would say, like a, a crocodile, with his nose stretched out, you're not achieving that. So I think you need a certain amount of pole flexion, not behind the vertical, it doesn't need to be that much, but just some flexion at the pole so that the whole top line of the neck, the muscles and the nuchal ligament are all under stretch. 